Okay, we're going to be attempting a vertical output repair on this TV here. As you can see, the vertical output is heavily damaged. It just sort of exploded in half. And uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to figure out why that happened in the first place because it's very unusual for something like that to just blow into pieces like that. So there's probably something else wrong in the circuit. I see a couple of related caps here and here. I already checked obvious stuff like diodes and stuff and nothing seems wrong I'll be cha changing those electrolytics and uh... gonna try and see if I can't prevent the new one from blowing up when I put it so I'm checking out the yoke and uh... I believe this is the vertical I think usually the horizontal is about 3 ohms and vertical is 10 ohms or it might be the other way around but one of these, one of these seems a little bit too low measuring about 5.5 ohms this one measures 3 ohms which is normal so I'm wondering if this has a short somewhere I did notice a lot of this glue stuff flaking off of here it looks cracked so I wonder if maybe that yoke is bad because that is a pretty catastrophic failure right there okay it's a bit too dark back here for this camera but I have a, a junk TV back here which is very similar to the one I'm trying to fix. And I'm testing its yoke. Uh, yellow and orange test 7.8 on this thing, so it's a little bit higher than that other one. But the blue and red tests only 2.5, which is lower than the other one. So I don't know. Screw it, let's just try it. I have the part anyway. So I'm about to fire this thing up for the first time. <clears throat> I'm a bit nervous because usually these replacement parts get really hot. As it is, the vertical outputs in these modern TVs, CRT TVs, get really hot and some of these are low quality and get even hotter. Had to remove the filter cap to get access to the screw. I'll put that back and try it out. Alright, so I'm about to fire this thing up. <clears throat> I changed the, all the electrolytics directly related to the vertical output. Uh, owner said that there was gaps at the top and the bottom before this thing blew up. That's a symptom of bad caps. 2 200 at 25, 1 at 50, 100 at 35, although I replaced it with 100 at 100, and a 0.68 at 50, which is kind of a weird value, but that junk chassis I measured the yoke on had the same exact cap in there, so I donated it. Okay, let's give this thing a whirl. I'm measuring the B plus right at the output of the power supply. I have the service manual for this thing, which is why I like working on LG products because they usually have their service manual very easy to find for free online. So let's switch it on and uh, I gotta press over here on the keypad to actually turn it on. Just standby voltage there. And power on over here. Hang on a bit. Okay, so it powered on. 112 B plus, that's good. Getting a picture. I you can see that. Alright, pictures there. <coughs> I'm gonna monitor the heat on the vertical output because as they as it is they get very hot. And if it's a crappy quality component they get even hotter. Some stains on the screen because the degausser is disconnected. This thing's been on for like three minutes or something, three or four minutes, and I can already feel this is getting kind of hot, like fairly hot, like I can't get keep my finger on it for too long. That's about all I can handle. And like I said, these things by nature seem to get really hot. Vertical outputs on these kinds of TVs always get really hot, which kind of makes it hard to gauge whether or not you have a crappy component that gets overheated or if it's just normal. Yeah, this thing's super hot, so I, I think I'm just going to leave it and like, if it blows up, it blows up, and if it works, it works. Because I mean, I already changed everything. Power supply is fine, B plus is fine, 112 is fine. That's what the service manual said, I think. Earlier I said 115, but it's actually 112. So uh, I changed all the caps, and I, except for the yoke being bad, I couldn't imagine anything else that could be really that wrong with it. 
I'm just not going to bother with it if it breaks again. If, if it's the yoke, then it's dead because I'm not going to get a new yoke. So let's see what happens. I took a few voltage measurements on the pins of the vertical output chip just to verify all of its voltages. I have three that don't quite match up or that are significantly different. This one's a little bit different, but I think it's a small enough difference not to really worry about it. These ones here are a little bit different, 29.55. Top row is the uh, service manual, bottom is what I read. So 29.55 20, on pin 2 is what service manual says, and I got 26.3. Over here it's 29.43 on the service manual, and I got 27.1. Uh, but I'll show you why I'm not super concerned about that in the stack. Okay, so here's the service manual voltages. This is the column for standard readings while the TV is running. And this is sort of like a service mode on standby. But this is what I was using as reference. This is where it says 29.55 and uh, 29.43 over here. So, but over here is the actual diagram where the chip is. Where is that stupid thing? Right here. So these are this pin 2 here and pin 6 are the two places where I was getting those readings from. Uh, those low readings from. And so they both basically get their power from the same place except this one has to go through this diode first. But right here it says 26 volts which is closer to what I'm getting. 26 volts. So I'm not really sure why it says 29.5 volts on the other one, but I mean 26 volts here on this, on the diagram. So I mean I'm not really concerned about that difference because we're just probably reading more along the lines what it says on the, on the actual diagram here. You know. So who cares, I think, I think that should be fine. The only other one that's a little bit more elevated than it should be by about 1 volt is this guy right here. But I'm not completely concerned about that because usually these aren't, you know, dead on. Yeah, I can't even keep my fingers on this thing for more than two seconds. That's way too much, even for for any TV. I think that's really just the bad quality of these replacement parts. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I've had a lot of bad experiences with both vertical output ICs and uh, horizontal output transistors uh, that they sell and they're just crappy Chinese transistors that overheat like crazy because they're just badly made. And looking online, this is a common problem that other people have. Yeah, that's extremely hot. A lot of people have these kinds of problems. So, yeah. I saw some people online that are using fans as a last resource for these things because they just get so incredibly hot that, you know, there's no other option. And you can't get, you know, good quality replacement parts that don't overheat like crazy. So a lot of people resort to putting fans on there. That is really hot. Ouch. But yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of TVs like this, and they're, they all get extremely hot right here, but I don't know. So I know that I'm like putting the blame on the new component and a lot of people might think, you know, what if the TV is doing the same thing to the new part that it did to the old part, which is, this is what's left of it, by the way. But I mean, like I said, I've had experiences with bad quality components before, and so one thing to uh, discard the possibility that the TV is trying to damage the new part like it did the old part is I'm going to check the uh, capacitors I replaced because I'm convinced that the reason why the old part failed is because of bad capacitors. You know, because even when the when the original part is good, there's a lot of heat right there, and that heat knocks out those capacitors pretty quick. So I'm testing out the electrolytic capacitors that I took out, and I found what I'm pretty sure was the reason why that old part right here blew. So this is the part that would have killed the original vertical output I see. This is a 100 microfarad at 35 volt capacitor. And I'm running audio through it um, in series between the output of an amplifier and the speaker. And you can hear there's nothing coming out of the speaker. This is the test that Shango 066 uses and it's helped me a lot. 
So it's hooked up. Volume's up and you, you can't really hear anything. So that's what would have caused that old IC to blow up. And right now I'm going to hook up a good one of these and you're going to see the difference. So there's a known good capacitor and you can hear the difference. It's running through this guy. Which is a brand new capacitor and you can hear if I hook it up to the old one. There's absolutely nothing there. Barely anything. And again, I'm going to try the the new one. And there's good clear audio out of that one. So this old capacitor was just totally dead. You can actually see that there's some bulging there. So that's what it would have killed the original vertical output I see. And I already tested the other small valley capacitors. Those ones were okay. Although they mostly only let a very high frequencies through the speaker because these are very low value. But this is what would have killed the original output I see. And the uh, basically solving the original problem. And the reason the new vertical I see output I see is heating up is because it's a piece of crap. You can see that the one that I'm using to test here is the same value. Oh, actually, I don't know if you can see that, but it's 150 volts. This is 35 volts, but I mean it's the same thing. You know, this is definitely open. So I took apart <coughs> yet another TV to uh, measure its yoke on the vertical side. It's giving me almost the same reading as the one in my other TV there that I'm trying to fix. Okay, so here's what I did. I ended up taking out the uh, vertical output I see that I put in there and uh, I looked through my junk pile and I found this chassis right here which had an STV9302B out a vertical output I see and the thing is though that this chassis only used like a 10 inch CRT or something like that and uh, this was like a TV DVD combo and uh, but I looked up that IC and it was used a lot on 21 inch uh, CRT TVs so it can definitely handle the uh, bigger CRT here this is also a 21 inch and so I popped it in and it's been running a while and this thing also gets really hot it's pretty much the same that's really hot I can't keep my finger on it for too long and uh, so I no longer really have the excuse of this being a, just a lower quality component because uh, you know this is at least like a factory install part it's never been replaced or anything so you know if it does the same with that IC then I'm just gonna chuck it up to the nature of this thing like I said I've noticed a lot of these especially these flat CRT TVs the ones with the flat CRT uh, the vertical output ICs uh, and heat sinks get really hot and yeah I've just noticed that and I'm just gonna leave it up to you know probably the nature of this thing that's actually probably why that electrolytic there the hundred microfarad dried out in the first place because it's right behind the heat sink and it's just taking all that heat until it you know finally dried out and when it dried out it just completely destroyed uh, the vertical output I see so I'm not gonna bother looking through this thing anymore uh, I'm just gonna leave it to its nature and uh, you know cuz it's not really that important I'm just trying to fix this for fun mostly and uh, if it blows up it blows up and if it doesn't it doesn't if it blows up I'll make some kind of an update video and I'll tell you about it but I'm not gonna bother looking through it anymore I forgot to mention one other thing that I tried to do was change the uh, B plus filters uh, because if there's ripple in the B plus it can cause weird issues like that it can also cause the uh, horizontal output to heat up but I tried swapping them made no difference so I put back the original picture quality on this thing isn't too bad I only have a crappy uh, wire antenna hooked up to it and uh, looks pretty good. Kind of looks crappy on camera, but it's not so bad. I'm just going to leave the uh, STV in there uh, instead of this uh, thing I bought because at least that one's a factory install component from the donor chassis it came from instead of this sort of questionable thing that I bought. So I'm just going to leave that thing in there and we'll see what happens. Let's just call it fixed.